Hey everybody, Brad Linder coming at you again tonight with Pinhead for this episode of the Daily Creating Comics card. So, I'm going to share this over really quick with the YouTube and Facebook channel, uh, Facebook Live, and now we have YouTube as well. Yay. Now, I'm going to knock this one out pretty quickly, I hope. It's going to be easy going as long as we don't get any grief about it. We'll be all right. But um, I'm going to start right out with some purple for this one, and I'm going to outline it really quick because I want to get um, this this layout kind of quick. And I'm just going to pop in the purple background from uh, the third Hellraiser movie where everything was kind of wiped out and they moved it from all the cool blacks and blues they moved it over into the uh, purples and violets for the backgrounds of hell and all that good stuff which made it really really dark and cool and it was that kind of um, mid 90s you know fad where everything was all about being visually cool with the with the backgrounds just as much as uh, the movie itself, which was cool when they started doing that. But you know, I always thought this one had a, a great mesh that just didn't go anywhere, and uh, I wish they would go back to it. I saw the latest Hellraiser, The Judgment. Man, that's crazy! I, I love those films. I'm a horror buff, as you guys know. But uh, yeah. This dude is something else. Now, I'm going to start right in on his face here. And um, I'm going to grab a black pen here because I see where I erased and missed a spot in two places. And I want to make sure I fill that in. Now, while that's sitting for a second, I'm going to go ahead and do these faces. Now, uh, these face colors. Uh, I have a Y11 here, which is really pale. I'm going to kind of go in and dab this on a little bit. I know it's going to look funky because you guys are going to be like, it's yellow. Why are you doing yellow? Um, like I did the uh, Silver Surfer piece, and I've done for a couple of other pieces, uh, I like to mix these tones because flesh isn't just all about the gray or the white or the, you know, um, the, the one-note monotone coloring, Okay. Flesh has a different color to it, and it's got a, a, a menagerie of colors in it. And I say menagerie because it's like they're living animals, the way they run all over the place, because colors show up everywhere. You know, it's a little bit of blue here, a little bit of yellow here, that kind of thing. And I really, really like doing that. And in my later work, I've started doing that a lot more now here recently, because uh, since I'm doing my own coloring on a lot of the projects that I'm working on, and I'm using a lot more of um, medium variation. I'm having a lot of fun with that. So I'm going to add in a lot of yellow here. And I know this is going to look bright at first. Uh, it, it's going to make him look kind of milky. And that's what I want. Now I'm going to go into this finger here and add a little bit of this as well. And like I said, I'm just adding it sporadically. I don't want to color the whole thing because that's not going to be the way he's colored. I just want to dab it in in places and bring it out. Uh, where there would be shadows or heavy spots for him in this case. Like I said, just kind of randomly placing it where it looks good with the shading of the natural tone of the flesh. Which, I mean, you, you can't really argue the point either way because uh, you, well, nobody's ever seen this guy, right? I mean, we don't know, and hopefully we won't. That would suck. <laughs> yeah. Get a knock at the door and you, who is it? <laughs> it's time to pay your debt. Uh, not good. Not good. So, hey, Brian. Glad you made it, buddy. Now, I'm going to go in with a, uh, a YR00. This is a neutral flesh tone. Uh, it's called Powder Pink. I'm going to go in on this underside of this just a little bit, and I don't want to warm him up too much, so I'm just going to put this in the lower parts where it would be a little darker. 
because if you go putting too much of this in there to warm him up and make him look alive, and that's not cool, because then he won't have that that dark, um, for lack of a better term, that gooey undead look. You know, uh, that. Let's see, that is what we're looking for, right there. Just kind of putting it on the bottom of these segments where he's been split. And we'll go from there. And we'll put a little bit under that lip right there as well. But like I said, I want to go on the bottom side of this thing where more of the shadows are. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is his chest plate that's actually open, which is kind of weird. It shows his chest, and that's where the hooks were, where he was in hell. We'll get to those in just a minute. Because I have a really cool fleshy... Um, maroon color that looks kind of like damaged tissue of that sort of thing and that's what I had in mind because I want to go that route rather than bright red but I do have a couple of red stat on so we'll go there too now I have a C1 but I'm not going to use it yet uh, that will be the gray tone I'm going to use a, one called a cool shadow which is a BG10 which is really really soft and this is going to give him that creepy blue dead look okay I'm going to go in here into the into the shadowed spots, and this is where I'm going to do the heavy shadows, up under the eyes, up under the brow, and down under the jawline, and down on the edge of the jaw to give him this kind of creepy look here because it's going to give him that green ghoulish tone that we want for this. So, And like I said, I'm not just spot coloring this. I am paying attention to where these colors are going. And I'm trying to keep them on one side versus another with like the the pinks and the the pinks and the reds. I'm trying to keep on one side of the frame and then I'm putting um, the green blue on the other to add different color variations so it'll look have a mirrored effect of kind of mother of pearl type of thing going on. That's the easiest way to explain it. I really like the idea of that. And let's go down to these fingers. Put it down on this side where that pink's going in the middle across the fingers. We'll go down on the sides, kind of touch base on the knuckles, give him that zombie look. Go into this one right here. And pull that out. Yay! Cool deal. Okay. Now, go in between these pinks again, like I said. Got that one going on. We get this chest right here, right up on this edge, like that. There we go, cool. Now he's starting to get that look. Now I'm going to go with the gray here, and this will tone a lot of that down. And it'll make it, you know, everybody's like, you paint him like he's a clown. Looks like a girl. But, uh, yeah, this will take majority precedence right here because... When I go over this, it'll wash all that out and blend it together. Very cool. And it'll calm all those all those bright colors. It'll gray them down and calm them down quite a bit. Now, I'm not going over every little aspect of it. I am staying loose with this one. But I am overcoating the majority of each piece so that we have that cool gray look starting to come out. And I didn't want to make him shiny looking, so I didn't add in uh, the brighter green or the brighter the brighter um, blue. So we don't have that problem. I want this to look like it was wounded flesh at one point. And it'll add that chalky decay look by the brakes. Okay. Cool and deal. Because I want you to kind of look at him and go, what kind of, you know, what's going on there? What is that color, you know, exactly? And I want that to be the thing that you think about the most. I'm going to kind of scribble this into these nails and let it set because I want them to have uh, a natural white highlight edge from the paper itself. And remember, like I said, I'm washing these colors together with this gray. So we're going to get the fusion we need to make it look 
lack of the flesh. So, going over that nail again, it's a little light. And like I said, this is just going to be a cool wash. That's all it is. Grab that corner. Boom. And now we have that great gray look. This is going to be awesome because whenever he dries up, it's going to look washed together and it's going to make it pop out like nothing else. Okay. So we got all that going on. And now comes the cool part. Let's see here. Moving the purple, moving the purple. I need the flesh colored. Um, this one is going to be a fuchsia. It's a RV09. And I know that's going to be bright for this, but I want it to look fleshy like it's, you know, uh, got some life to it. And like he's being kept alive and being tortured kind of thing. Okay. Now, I know that's going to be bright for a, a base coat. People are going to be like, what? That's that's crazy. That's too light. It's bright. It's bright. Yeah, I know. The reason I want it like that is because when I go in here, one, it's a pop of color that we need to contrast the purple. And two, just go over that edge just a little bit, with leaving a little bit of white like that into that flesh tone that I crossed with it. Now, we got that going on. I just wanted to leave a little bit of white. And now I'm going to go back in with this red, which is an R27. It's kind of a lipstick red kind of thing. I'm just going to wash this over a little bit and make it look, for lack of a better term, and get gross about it, I'm going to make it look moist, okay? That's the big thing. I want to make it look moist. So we got that going on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this, um, this B32 first. I want to make sure what's going on here with B32. Okay, it's working. I'm going to coat out this uniform here like this. I'm just base coating this one because I have two other colors to go on this. I have a dark uh, C, I think that's a W7 and a B32. Uh, I'm sorry, a B34 because this is a B32. So you go up one shade and uh, they go darker the higher the number. So just going to kind of wash this out a little bit and... There's that connection. Now we got that going on. And right down here, you got to be careful to stay in the pattern. And there we go. So we can mark this out. Try to stay in the uniform here. That's the cool thing about these wedges. You can use them as fine corners like this, or you can use them as full on just broad strokes to squawk be done with it um, in this case I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna leave that open to make it shadows for the fingers underneath there inside the palm of the hand kind of thing um, let's see I have the B 34 first got to tone this up a little bit for these dark spots because I'm gonna have the light come in from one side and then I'm going to leave it open because I'm not going to have the cube light up. Most people would have the, the cube glowing and all that cool stuff, and I'm not going to. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to go in from one side here, make the light come in from right across here, right across here, right across here. I'm going to darken out this other side for the most part. I think I'll add a streak of light right there just to. Break contrast. But I want to keep it simple because I'm going to come through with uh, that W7 and darken that bad boy down. So, 
Okay. And because this is, a, we're going to make it uh, look, hopefully, come out leathery uh, like it's supposed to be, but I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to promise that. I'm going to try, but I'm not going to promise that because I don't know if it'll come out that way or not. Because normally leather effects with Copics are a pain in the butt, and I don't know if this card will allow for it, but we're going to try. We're going to try. And if I can pull it off, awesome. Because this has a leather vinyl type of thing going on with it. Could get a little weird. Okay. Now this is a warm 7, so this should pull this off very well. And giving us that really ashy, polished leather look. I say ashy and polished in the same sentence. Everybody's like, what? It's an ash color is what I mean by that, but yet a polished leather smooth coating is what I'm going for. There we go. Explain what I mean there because that, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's been a long day. But, um, let's see here. It's been a long week, and I don't get the weekends off, so not unless I plan for it. And this week I didn't plan for it, so yeah. Let's see here. I think this is coming together okay. It's not exactly as clean as I wanted it, but it'll work. That actually looks pretty cool. I can dig that. So we'll go with it. Now, let me grab a couple of other colors here because where are you? There you are. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> I've grabbed um, a flesh color, which is an RO2, which is a standard flesh color. I've got an E33, which is a sand. I've got a YR24 and a YR91 and a YR26. Now, these colors are going to be our base coat here for the cube. Okay? I'm just going to pick one side. A little dot there, a little dot there. We'll try to keep this simple and clean. But I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to go on this side right here and kind of go all the way around. No matter which direction it's going, I'm going to kind of go all the way around with it and uh, push it out on that side and give it the rainbow effect. So now we have that going on. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing right in here with each one of these missed one. Get right there. There. Always want to go in on a, on a flow like this and do it from one side unless you have different light sources, which I don't because I have one coming in from the top, you know, right here. This is kind of beaming right there, right there, right there. So it's going to break it up and give it that uh, mirrored look. So now I've got the, the uh, RO2 down. I'm going to pop on with the E33, which is a sand color, which will give it more of that gold or brass type of color. And I'm going to go over here on the other side of this one with this. And the reason I want to oppose it is because this is a very warm color as well. And it's a very flesh um, hue in regards to looking pretty close to the one prior in the range of colors. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know what happened there with the high pitch thing. <laughs> now, I'm going to come in this way, this way, this way, boom, 
done, 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 done. Now I know it doesn't look like I'm coloring it all and leaving it open. But I am actually hitting each of those marks. And if you noticed, back towards the back, I got a little closer and a little bit better saturation. And the reason is because there's less light back there. Um, for us, we should see more of this area instead of this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and warm up that button with this YR24. Warm up that button case right there. Ding. Yay, button. Don't push my button. Anyway. PG, PG, PG. Okay. Now, we're going to go over here. Just kind of running that down the middle. And the reason I'm running that down there like that is because I'm about to get uh, dark with this really cool putty color. And this other uh, darker one I'm going to get on here in just a sec. And I want to have these uh, bright gold orange type of streaks in it towards the center where it warms it up as they will uh, tone it down a lot. They'll mute it. So you have to have a lot of color there. And it may not look like you want to do this. Why not just color it with two colors and shade it out, you know, or three colors and shade it out. But the reason I'm doing these stripes is because when this dries, all of that will look metallic and brass coated, that kind of thing. And that's what we want. We want to have that brassy look. So now I'm coming in with a Y26, which is more of a mustard color. And that's where we're going to do some more of these other things. I'm just going to pick on one side here. And instead of doing this one, every one, I'm going to go every other one. Because where these main rises are, like here and here in the center, I'm going to have it pick up on that. So, we've got that going on. Boom, boom. That one. Skip that one over there. Do that one. There we go. Cool. Now I'm going to do one or two of these on the top, too. Just kind of building it out and adding that flow through without tapping into it so it's so hard that we can't function. Because it's like, man, you saturated it with that color. Now, um, I have final coloring being the putty color, which is uh, a YG91. That's the reason I'm using this one. This is a beautiful color for stuff like this. And this is what I'm talking about. It'll kind of come in and mute everything down just a little bit. And it'll give it a kind of a unpolished metal look just by brushing it on just a little bit to mute some of the color. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to make it muddy. But the reason that I'm muting the color is so that all the white stuff doesn't stand up too heavily and overpower it. I want it to look metallic. So uh, metal always has a base color to it, no matter what. So you got to figure out what that base color is going to be and then go in and mute that down. So got that going on. Kind of paint that out there like that. Cool deal, right? And now because it is pinhead. I'm going to go right across here. And because he's kind of looking up, I'm going to mute that down. So with that said, there we are. I hope you guys dig it. I know it's a simple one, but the thing is, it does work. So anyway, with that said, as always, you guys know how this is. We've got this, we've got this simple rock for just a little bit of time and make it better for the next generation. I will talk to you tomorrow.